I have two coats on the top layer here. One coat on everything else that we rolled on yesterday. And I want to bring you up kind of close for that. And I'll tell you what, what has been in my mind overnight. This I don't like. That looks like a pineapple or something to me. And I think that even though it might go with the bright colors of, of this thing when it's done and pineapples are in the bottoms broke off of it right there and i just don't like it so i'm going to ask eric to bring this little cutting tool that he has and try to cut that off right there and cut this centerpiece off and i'll either leave it without a centerpiece right there or i'll make one to put there with um an iod mold and of course i'll show you about all of that this you can see it's a little bit um textured because i was using that textured roller and you can still see some of the other color underneath so it definitely needs another coat of paint and i'm going to paint this coat on with a brush and i'll do that um shortly and we will record that because i do want to show you how to put on the next layer of the DIY paint because it is a little bit different than if you were using a, a paint that has an acrylic base or something like the Junk Monkey or the um, Dixie Bell, something that has a hardener in it. This doesn't, this is reactivated with water and if you've not watched any of those videos before, I wanna make sure that you do see how to use that. The next um, decision that I've made is I'm going to paint the inside of the drawers with the Dixie Belle white. I think it was drop cloth. I have it here in case I wanted to do any highlighting or anything with it, but it's going to be too much. I painted the inside of the drawer the door areas there with the old 57 but because that's the diy paint and that's then going to require a top coat and all of that that's more sort of steps than i want to take for the inside of the drawers but because there's because there's overspray and stuff like that in them something has to be done i'm going to continue to look for maybe a drawer liner or something to go in here and of course you'll see that if i do but it can't be too busy because of how busy the rest of the piece is going to be but what i'm going to work on today is eric is going to come shortly to put the hinges back on because like I said the painting of this portion has to be done with the doors on and the drawers in because it's gonna you know have a design that incorporates all of it but I did decide that I would do the inside of these doors which is actually really nice wood but nothing else is going to be left wood on here I'm going to paint that with the the Dixie Bell drop cloth as well so the inside of the inside of there well I'll get another coat of DIY then I'll have to top coat it because it doesn't have it, its own hardener in it I'll have to top coat every bit of this that I've done in the DIY and uh, I used the DIY one because I had it um, and it was the right color I thought about ordering uh, Bahama Jade or something like that from Junk Monkey and you sure can do that if you're going to be ordering from them for one I didn't want to wait on it to get here and uh for two i wasn't sure that it was going to be exact without seeing it in person whether it was going to be the right color to match the patina that we're going to put on later and i know this is the right color for that and i love this paint i mean it it takes another step but it does things that other paints won't do and since this is going to be a little more creative i did want to go ahead and share that but what i'm going to do right now is i found the copper that i didn't have uh day before yesterday I brought it upstairs this is a metallic base coat you can tell it's been used and this is the metallic top coat now I've left the legs unpainted and in just a moment well whenever I start on this I'm going to tilt the camera down to where you can see that and you'll have to excuse me because I'm gonna have to lay on the floor to do it because there's no other way for me to see it up close and be able to get it done besides to lay on the floor to do it. So the front four decorative legs, I'm gonna be using um, my Paint Pixie number eight and to get up close to the top and the edges and all that, I'm gonna use this artist brush 
and we're going to put on the base coat and you put on at least two coats of the base coat i'm thinking two is all it's going to take uh because of starting out with you know the texas color there whatever that like the burnt orange i think that's all it's going to take is two coats and then you put the shiny metallic top coat on one or two coats of that but i don't know whether i'm going to drip paint from some of the other um, decorative things that I'm going to be doing down on this so I'm not going to put the top coat on till last but I'm going to right now while I'm waiting on him to come and bring a tool to cut this thing off potentially and put those doors on for me I'm not going to waste time I'm going to go ahead and get started with um, putting the base coat on you don't have to use the um, mister as much with the Dixie Belle paint as you do the DIY paint but my brush is dry and I don't have any other water in here, so I'm gonna use that. I'm not gonna like keep you here to watch all of these because there's four and they're gonna be exactly alike. I'll try to do the two center ones and then I'll come back and do the other one. There's not much to it. I just wanted to walk you through it. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of water on my brushes. faster when I'm using the paint pixie brush those things hold a tremendous amount of paint but up here they're also a bigger you know bigger bristled brush up here I have to get up close I need this smaller one and this is just one of the ones that come in the um, like the 25 pack or whatever I'll put y'all a link if you don't know what I mean. I don't use my good artist brushes for this kind of stuff because sometimes this paint will harden pretty fast and stuff like that and I don't want a chance ruining my Blick brushes and things like that on this type of project. I hope this looks as good in person as it does in my mind. Okay, let me put this brush. These brushes hold so much paint that I really, really want to make sure I start with a damp brush. So I'm just misting my brush. And you don't dip your brush way down in there. That's less than halfway. I don't know if you can see the difference there in the amount of paint that went on with the artist brush and with, with the paint pixie brush, but it's a lot, it's a lot of difference. I'm just getting it on there right now. I'm not worried about my brush strokes or anything. For one, this is my first coat. Here we'll need the, um, the flat brush again. This is about a one inch flat, but to get down here next to the legs. Just going around and around. Once I get you know, the paint on the whole thing, I'll go back around and semi-straighten my brush strokes. But that's one of the awesome things about this style of furniture painting is if things are too perfect, it doesn't look as good as when you allow the human strokes and potential for errors. Making sure to get really good in between the I'm 
I'm excited to see how this looks in the end, but I'm also excited to share the technique that we're going to use once we get to putting the bright colors, the berry dance and the crazy eyes, and then the patina. There will be a lot more of the uh, teal showing, or that's what I'm thinking at this moment, on the sides. So I'm going to make sure and put a, you know, a really good coat on there in case that's how that works out. But most of this front will be covered with the other colors. Okay, now just to make it not be too, too crazy, making sure there's no runs. No big blobs anywhere, no place where I totally missed. You really never know that unless you're down here on the inside. Hey, I did a good job. How about that? Yay me. A lot of times you'll think you got every bit of one of these spindles, but when you come in from underneath in the back and look, there'll be a couple of splotches that you missed. So I'm going to do, can you see this one? I'm going to do this one, same exact thing that I just did there. And then I will stop recording and get the other two. And probably just go ahead and put the second coat on all of them as they dry. I wish you could see how much more paint this paint pixie brush puts on. I'm not sure how much you can tell from the video, but it's a lot. It's like, would take three coats of it drying using an artist brush compared to using this natural bristle brush. The Mr. Bottle, the cup of water, and my brush fell off. And remember, I'm going to put a coat of Big Top on top of this DIY when it dries to protect it from lifting as we put the other paint products on top of it. You're not really supposed to dip down in your can, but this can is, I'm, I'm using it all in this project, so I'm not gonna worry about that and I'm gonna dip straight in there. And I don't have my apron on, but it'll be okay. Okay, this is another Paint Pixie brush. This is the number 12, and you can see how thick it is, and these bristles are so thirsty. So I'm gonna dip them down in here first and let them absorb some water. I'm kind of just wringing it out to get some of the excess, not completely out because the whole point was I wanted some water in it. And I'm gonna then just put that right down in my can. And I'm gonna lightly mist the surface. If we didn't, missed this surface and if I didn't dampen that brush when I came up with that brush and started to wipe on here the moisture that's in that paint would have lifted this paint back off of here and it would have went right back down to that burnt orange so I'm just lightly mist in the surface because this paint is clay based it's thirsty it wants to absorb that so instead of it grabbing a big hunk out of what I'm fixing to lay down. This paint's pretty thick. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spray a, spray a couple of sprays down in there too and sort of twirl my brush over that surface to mix it in and thin it up just a little bit. And then now I don't wanna overwork it. That's the thing. 
my plan was if I had had a smooth roller, I was going to come in this morning with a paper bag or with that blue scrubby and to moisten a little bit more and sort of sand this texture down, you know, just sort of buff it down and that would have very well worked. But because I didn't get enough coverage out of the two coats that I put on here using that roller, it really needed another layer of paint. So that's what we're doing. moisture on my brush normally you would try to go all the way down so I'm going to show that here but I have to pre-dampen it so that I'm getting straight lines here Especially after your can has been used this much, I mean, after you've left them open for a while, it continues to thicken up and, uh, you know, some of the moisture naturally evaporates, that kind of stuff. So it's always good to have your Mr. Bottle available when you're working with the, with any of the Chalky Tiles style paints, but especially with the DIY or any other, you know, chalky based one. Not chalky, but uh, clay. I'm worried about that um, part that I put up here at the beginning already be starting to dry and me pulling some of it up. So I'm trying to hurry, but I'm gonna miss that just a tad. And I didn't get this end yet, so there we go. Just trying to not have stop and start marks in my um, brush strokes on the top. Okay, it may end up needing one more coat. I'm gonna let this dry and see here through the middle. It looks like it, but it's at the point right now, if I was to try to put another coat on there, it would just reactivate what's underneath and bring that up and that's just not what we're wanting to happen. So. For right now, I'm going to finish putting another coat with my brush on both sides and definitely through the center of the front and um, underneath, you know, all the areas where it needs it that it may not be covered with uh, uh, the berry dance and the crazy eyes later and needs another coat on the inside and then I'm going to put another, you know, two coats total of the base coat of the copper on the legs. And then I'll see you again. I wanted to come in real quick and show you about putting, this is the uh, big top after show they call it, which is a water-based top coat by DIY. And that's what I'm gonna use over this old 57 that's on there now. And the, you can see that the doors are back on. And instead of using the old ones, he put the new ones on. My husband can't hear, so and, and I appreciate what he does. So I've dabbed the um, a little bit of the copper top coat just to take the silver part from showing off of there. And one other thing he wanted me to share with y'all, the holes were wallered out in there where the old hinges were at. That's why the doors were hanging loose. And if you can see here, these holes are huge. I don't know what hardware I'm gonna find to go in there that's gonna be huge enough for that hole. See how big that is? 
and he said if you're filling something in and the old holes are too big you go out in your yard and you get a green switch and you break it up and you drop it in the hole and you put your screw in there and that'll uh, expand and contract to fill up that hole. I have an, uh, the second coat on everything now which I did with the brush except for the insides which I still have to do and I wanted to save that until last um, to make sure that I had enough paint out of this particular can to do everything else and all my touch-ups on the outside. So I do and one other thing I wanted to show you on this I'm going to dampen my brush just a tad and this is the Paint Pixie FL not Paint Pixie, Dixie Bell FL, and I just dampened it a tad. But this water-based top coat will also take this paint off of here if you're not careful. So that's why I wanted to come in just for a second on this part. I'm not gonna spray it and I'm not gonna mist it, um, but I am gonna be careful with it. So, I will be doing this all over the whole thing because it has, if I was to spray, if I was to take a baby wipe, I could wipe all of this paint off right now. There's no, um, no finish on it whatsoever. No top coat, you know, no hardener. I'm, I'm dipping straight in here because there's, it's less than half full and I'm going to use all the rest of it on this project. Otherwise, I would dip it out in a little bowl so that I wouldn't contaminate it because it is going to pick up some of this old 57 teal paint and put it back in the, you know, in the jar there. So, just being careful going over it and I'm not overworking it. Once I've gone over it one, maybe two times, that's it. But see how it's bringing the color back up to the way it was when it was wet. It dried a little bit lighter, but when you put this, this happens with the DIY paint, when you put the top coat on, it brings it back to the color, and this brighter color is the color that it's gonna stay. Like once this top coat goes on, now if I was to come back over here now and waller back and forth on that, I would remove that paint because this is water-based and would reactivate it. So once this goes on, of course this is just one coat in the top at least where it will have a lot of use you could put you know anywhere from one to three coats here on this side but the top where it's going to have more use will need probably three coats but i'm going to put one coat on once that little place dries where it was uh scratched i'm going to put one coat on and then I'm gonna go ahead with my decorative process and then I'll put the other two coats on after that. I'm only putting this coat on right now to make sure that this paint doesn't lift up when I put my next colors on top of it. I'm wanting to seal this so that it's done. Now, of course, I could sand through it if I wanted it to be distressed, but that's you know not the look that we're that we're going for so that's all i wanted to do right now i'm going to continue to work on this until i get the whole piece done i'm going to do the uh insides now that i'm you know more or less done i'm probably going to have to do a tad of touching up so i'm going to go over this portion of it probably with some dark wax and things like that at the very end to make it look more aged. Um, I did not want another coat. I wanted some of that other paint to show through a little bit to give it that little bit of an aged look. So that's definitely, you know, what I was going for. And if I was not going for that, then I would put on another coat. And you still can, say if I was to change my mind, after I put this top coat on, it's not gonna reactivate that underneath, but I can still put more coats of old 57 on over this, but then I would have to seal them again. That's all from that for now. I'm gonna do those other parts and 
I'll come back and do a short video when he's cutting off that piece in case y'all ever have a, something like that that needs to be done. You can uh, see how to do it. And when something else cool happens, I'll share it.